Okay, so you're just in case they can't hear on here, you're calling the meeting to order at 420. It did. It actually has been because since I logged on, but she will splice it to start it right now. Aye. No, she shouldn't. She's no longer. Yeah. Aye. Linda Robinson. Aye. Kate Bliss is not here. Pat Wheeler not here. Bob Blair here. Chris Keefe is there. Peggy Sardell is here. And cameo. And cameo. And cameo. <laughs> And Kristen. I was going to say, did you forget Kristen? That's right. You forgot me about that. Oh, you smell Charlie. <laughs> um, has anyone or has everyone read and approved, uh, read the minutes of the previous meeting? I just seen them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. I read them. They, they would have yeah. been from <laughs> June. Well, you didn't meet. Did you try to meet and then didn't meet? I think that's what happened. So it would have been May. Oh, the minutes. No, the I last. Is that the one where you were downstairs? That was Ju that was July that July. Laurie and I were downstairs. That was July. We were pretty casual about it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but to clarify, we usually don't meet in July. No, but I thought August. you said because we were going to compare these notes, we were going to meet in July. So that's how Laurie and I, well, I, I think I missed that. There. So it wasn't June meeting. <laughs> that's probably what happened. Yeah. Okay. Either way. So, I don't. Who did the meeting for June? I would have gotten. Was, it was probably Kate. I think or was it, it your Lori? I think it was Kate. Was it Kate? Okay. Yep, she did. Kate did the minutes. Anybody have any objections to accepting the minutes no. as submitted? All those in favor? Aye. Karen? Aye. Dory? Aye. Linda? Aye. Bob? Aye. Okay. Approved by those in the test. Um, fiscal updates. You know, I um, I don't know how I went to the doctor all day. <laughs> I did so far for the past this week that I really didn't do a whole bunch. But I did do just this. This is fiscal twenty pounds. And in the middle of oh, it, my right. computer decided it was going to go in capitals. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is all fiscal year. This fiscal twenty five. Fiscal twenty five. Well, no, we're not in twenty five. Is it backwards? This is oh. twenty five. Yes. Oh, it is fiscal twenty. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Those Joel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Kate did the math. I just went back and yeah. found them. So oh, the Gilbert, fiscal Gilbert year here is, is July. Twenty five dollars. Wheels on wheels mileage twenty three thirty two. That's for the driving expenses for one of the drivers. Uh, Five dollars, Tai Chi, two hundred seventy-five dollars, and Mass CLA membership dues, three twelve. Do we get a lot of use out of that? I wonder. Maybe we should pay more well, attention to them since we're paying them three hundred twelve bucks. I see it come up on my emails. Sometimes I read them. My so, guess would be that they have. Um, some programming and resources that yeah. you know if you had questions about things right. too uh donations included 150 for the powder house moves uh 89 between yoga and what is sale but it's tai chi it's a it's a kind of yoga like it's the yoga. exercise program i forget i i had looked it up the last time um okay. tai no. chi Sixty-nine van. Oh, how about that? Van, one hundred thirty bucks. There was one lady who used the van continually. Every time she uses it, she saves money. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Grab and go meals thirty. Yeah. Okay. And so the total of that was four sixty-eight. So we still get donations for the Potter House News. Um. I did it at the beginning of this fiscal year. I don't know if you're still going to do it, but it, that's from an attorney in Northbrook. We won't turn down donations. <laughs> <laughs> I also was at a friend's in Marion this week when um, her their COA newsletter came to their house. And um, on the front of it was stamped the postage for this newsletter um, provided by a grant from 
the Office of Elder Affairs. Oh, yeah, really? Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're using their um, formula grants. Yeah, to pay maybe for it. not specifically. Yeah, but yeah. We're trying to find what sales. It's not like cheer yoga. It is, something. yeah. It's not like, you know, sailing on the ocean really. like it's you were not, thinking of. Nothing like it sounds great, it actually. But I, I remember that it was, it did stand for something, S A I L. But I can't tell you what it was. Yeah. I, I am going to figure it out. I will we're find gonna that get an answer. by the end of this meeting. It has to do with going from one place to another uh, under sale, under canvas, I should say. Um, okay. So, any comments on the budget information? Donations, mm -hmm. expenses, part time wages. Um, tai Chi yoga sale and van updates. Okay. Tai Chi and yoga, are they still going on? Yes. Okay. And the sale. There's a yoga one, a yoga uh, Zoom meeting. Yeah. That usually only has like two people, maybe three. Yeah. So it's still just two to three for yoga? How about so it's, that's the Zoom one. Oh, Zoom. The regular yogas. In, hey, time, so Kristen, I... But between six and eight. Oh, okay. I found the, what it is, S-A-I-L. Oh, you found it. What does it yep. mean? It means stay active and independent for life. Oh. That's, it's some kind of yoga, I guess. That's, that's what it stands for. I like Thank it. you. Thank you. It almost sounds like a Tai Chi thing, staying active so that you don't fall over all the time. I think what it is is elderly <laughs> yoga. So elderly too. yoga? Yeah. Maybe it's like Zumba gold. For people who can't stand. Exactly. exactly. Oh, yes. <laughs> you okay. are correct. Thank I you, think. Chris, for finding that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, updates. Uh, okay. Do you have discussion as well as? Well, no, let's start with just the VN first. So, sprayed some vegetable oil and stuff on the bottom. Smells great when it's overheating the exhaust pipe. Nice. Well, another thing about the van is um, the fire chief is um, nice. going to be ordering a new uh, defibrillator for the van. Oh. The other one's the battery went, went out, and they decided that it would be more effective for them to take over. So they're in charge of the defibrillator. Okay. They'll do the maintenance on it and everything else in the future. And they will but save. But it's going to be costing us like fourteen hundred dollars. So that comes up. Yes, but and they will we'll, cover the supplies. Donation account. Oh. So and they will cover the supplies for it going down the line. So that makes up for it a little bit. Um, and they the fire department. Fire, okay. Um, they get a discount on the supplies because they service so many of them. And did, does somebody do a regular like monthly check that it's working? Yeah, I don't know. But they do service it in accordance with whatever that okay. um term is, which I don't know if it's monthly or bi-monthly, I'm not sure, but yeah. yes, they have to go around and do checks. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, I know that's been in my experience. So. Mm -hmm. And the one that was in there, had we chosen to keep using it, would have cost us 400 and some dollars to put a new battery in it. Mm -hmm. And the advantage to having the same one as the fire and emergency services is if they change the, the battery. Yeah. 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 It's on the shelf probably fits everybody's. Nice. Mm -hmm. makes a lot more sense. Only next time they have. And a, how much did you say it was? Fourteen hundred. Okay. Okay. Wasn't more than that. Okay. So then the let's see. Hey, uh, we could discuss the WRTA was meeting it, we had. Uh, is there anything else with the van? It's still been running, and we have them. But we still have only one driver. It's, oh, there's still just one driver. It's just Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Whereas I'm hot to have it running five days a week at a minimum. Because I saw an email. Was it this week? Somebody asking to use it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't Wasn't know. there checking the, the driver? I, did I hear this somewhere that used to work here and yeah. wanted to come yeah. back? Yeah. Close to... I spoke oh. to her a few weeks ago and she was 
and you know and then you, maybe she wanted to do war cost work instead of doing that so she just couldn't make up her mind she just yeah. leave and huh. you just can't pressure no yeah. one of the things i want to do is call the other coas in the area and see if they have drivers who would like more time the hours to to get them from those and maybe they could you know pick up a day for us i know the two i did i think had to have per diems so yeah. you know what i think lancaster did too when i talked to them i think they had regulars and some extra mm -hmm. yeah well clinton had certain drivers that did so certain days and then they'd go to another town and do extra days because they oh. needed one that wanted more time so well, i think that that last driver we had the, the woman get her name she used to drive for bolton on a regular day mm -hmm. and they bolton had priority yeah oh uh, okay I'll take out the donuts and coffee because I sealed the deal. <laughs> yes. Well, so I mean, you're we can do that. Yeah. It's hard to get drivers, though. It's so the reason possible. it's just Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we just have the one driver. Uh, we, Kristen, and I sat in a Zoom meeting with four members of the staff at Worker, well, actually three, Worker Regional Transit. And the fourth was from Metro West Regional Metro Transit. West Regional Transit Authority. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, discussing both van ownership and uh, provision of vans by them. And um, they also would be at the WRTA with the Regional Transit would be able to schedule the vans it would go the request would go through their central office where they that's all that office does. so they would dispatch yes they would dispatch and we uh, would can i just ask a question though because I, I my transportation department we looked into outsourcing it and other pace programs um had outsourced transportation and the complaint was total loss of control so you be like right now you know, we say where where we can go and who they'll take, right? But when it was outsourced dispatching, there was no control over, oh, no, but this person really needs to go take this one kind of thing. Um, I think you are given a schedule based on whatever the dispatch says, which is based on the calls that they get to book for appointments. The only thing they said they ever had complaints about or that sometimes people who lived on the same street, depending on what time their appointments were, you might pick up one on Pleasant Street and then you might go on over to South Street and then you might go come back, back to Pleasant. Pleasant. They did say sometimes it, it gets weird like that because it's all based on what time their appointments are. Like the first person yeah. gets picked up who has a two o'clock, then the yeah. 2.15 appointment, then the 2.30. But I didn't, I mean, at least we didn't hear from them anything about folks having concerns i mean i guess maybe they wouldn't tell us that i don't know well remember the well, ones that did that though they did tell <laughs> us that they were pretty open with us about issues we yours in um nonprofits or businesses or what? so we at our pace program um out of east boston we have our own transportation department um uh, but it's costly and so we looked into you know outsourcing it to mm -hmm. these outside companies um, but because, you know, we have 800 participants in our program and we have to transport them to all medical appointments, um, being able to control that was really important, you mm -hmm. know, because we had to get them there. Um, and that was very difficult in an outsourced model. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have a lot of people that use the van right now. I'm hoping if it's or offered more regularly, they will. Yeah. Um, but um and and maybe it's a non-issue you know I, I i'm assuming though the director or when we hire one um will know like mrs jones we've got to get her to this appointment and so you know would prioritize mrs jones when you get to know people um i don't is know that, is that how it presently works peggy we don't have any of priority we did at one point mm -hmm. have a gentleman who had to go to uh, dialysis, dialysis is usually dialysis. what it is. Dialysis, but it was some kind of <laughs> oh. like that. Once a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for uh, no, no, no. He was calling the work service. 
we would what? still hire the drivers. The, the drivers would still be town employees. So we would still be able to, you know, probably say if there was something urgent or something needed to be tweaked a little bit. Um, I, I don't really see that that would be much of an issue. Um, and then we, the nice thing is they offered us a couple different options, right? I mean, there, there were different models that they, um, you know, do, but one of the models is they provide a van and you hire the people, you pay for the gas, but they do the maintenance because it's their van. And they do the dispatch. And they do the dispatching out of their center in Worcester, that that's all that they do. The other option though, that they talked about, which I thought might be a better option, at least initially, was pairing up with a neighboring community that already had this model and having them add us to their route. Because I don't know that we have the volume right now to have our own 16 to 18 passenger van, which is what they provide you with. And I would hate for us to start that service up and then them take it away because we don't have sufficient usage. So what you can do, I guess we used to partner with Clinton, they were saying, we back, back in the day. No? You would know. I never heard of that. I know two um, directors ago, she tried to partner with Fulton, but Fulton just didn't want, wasn't interested. Well, the WRTA can actually work to make that. Can I mean, obviously, they can't force anybody, but mm -hmm. they'll talk to your neighboring communities and help you make that partnership and that mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. And I imagine there's funding that they provide that's involved either to us to help offset or to the member community that's providing that service. Um, and then they add you to the route. And the advantage of that too is, and I kept thinking Clinton, because that was sort of the one we talked about. I imagine that um, their van, uh, you know, goes to their senior center. And I know that one plus other ones, our residents can take advantage of too. So mm -hmm. in a nice way, yeah. it might open up to a neighboring senior yeah. center, folks being able to go there and take advantage of the services that they have too. One of the reasons we went with having our own van and having our own dispatcher because the WRT, Worcester Regional Transit Authority, not to use acronyms, um, has a catchment area or a geographical area that they serve. And we happen to be in the upper right hand corner of it. So a lot of our people want to go to Hudson and Marlboro for medical treatments, and that's totally oh, side of the line. So that's one of the reasons we have we stuck with our own stuff. Does Metro West cover there? They well, we we do. discussed the possibility of them cooperating with Metro West. And I, I did, did you get the sense that they were processing that? I did, because they actually asked mm -hmm. us. They, they had put together a little agenda for the meeting, and one of the questions on there was, are your people mostly going to Worcester, or are they looking to go to hudson Marlboro area? And, you know, I said it's, it was probably both, but my understanding would be since our closest city is Marlboro, folks are more headed toward that direction. And they said they've come yourself. up with collaborative, creative solutions oh. between the two RTAs um, for other communities. So they seemed very open to that. And actually we had the administrators of Worcester Regional Transit and really? uh, MRTA, MWRTA. So, and I have to say they were, they were lovely. Yep. Um, they yep. were very pleasant. They were very um, communicative. It seemed like they worked well together and they seemed very open to addressing our issue because I said, you know, the challenge of being in Worcester County, but having your closest city being in a different county is where are we crossing the lines? Yeah. And they said, mm -hmm. oh no, we, we work yeah. together and we've done this before That's for right. other communities, hmm. but they really want to know what we want. And yeah. so- I think yeah. another argument that I would make for outsourcing um, is something that um, you brought up a little bit in what they told you. So uh, I had my own transportation department, part of our program and because of the way PACE works and we sort of give them everything they want and really wrap our arms around them. You know, it became like everybody wanted their own van and I don't want to wait for a minute. And, you know, I, I, oh, you're going to make me leave at one, but it's 20 past 12. I want to leave now. And just like you said, you know, the people on Pleasant Street, but they were already on Pleasant Street, that kind of thing. When it's outsourced, that becomes the expectation when it's in-house, it's harder to say no because there are people, mm -hmm. but it's totally unsustainable. I can tell you now, having mm -hmm. done it for a program of 800 people, it's not sustainable to, to do special requests go get for Mrs. everybody. Jones and, oh, wait, I know you're going over there and we're passing their house, but I want to go home first, you know? Um, 
it's not sustainable. You can't as it grows, and particularly in this environment where you can't get any drivers. No. It's just not sustainable. Mm. Plus, it gets too expensive. Can I make a comment? We don't have that in Germany. We have riders to get on the bus, van and say, well, that's all right, I'll go with them. I'll just ride around with them. You can take me home whenever you have time. Okay, well, that's <laughs> nice. People are, I have to say, they are very nice in this town. I, you know, <laughs> I've been true. impressed. That's people true. are fairly accommodating. Way to get out of the house. That's good to hear. Change of scenery. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to ask, is it is it possible to do the WRTA thing with another town like Clinton? And still have our own van for anything beyond the area. Uh, we would keep our the our van is our van, so, right, so we keep that. We as would a keep backup. that absolutely. Okay. And I was thinking that would be for a special trip or a event. Say you mm -hmm. want to go to mm -hmm. whatever X event or take Those a field movies. trip to. Uh, yeah, I want to go to Canopy Lake Park. I don't know wherever you guys want to yeah. wherever yeah. you want, but. <laughs> You know. yeah that's probably more more the right thing to yeah. say I, I was being silly because i feel like going to canopy lake park because it's summer um but they yeah you could definitely keep the own van the only thing is you're still going to have to maintain funding in the in your budget for maintenance on the van the one advantage to having the wrta as your sole van is they will pay for all of the maintenance on that vehicle they charge us for your letting us use the van and doing the no so yeah. and they actually reimburse from what i heard on that call yes yeah. was it yesterday gosh mm -hmm. it seems like it was four days ago now uh from what i heard on the call they do reimburse for salaries and gas too yeah. so, so it's a pretty good deal it's a completely funded program and we don't have any money in the game correct wow and the reason we don't is because we got a van i guess um senator is it senator naughton or representative not yeah. that got us the van which it makes sense when you explain that you know given our location yeah. wanting to have that freedom but if we could work something out between the two rtas and have one of them pay for it like if we were we'd be we would probably be under worcester the wrta but work something out with the mwrta and then not have to pay for it i mean or also that would solve your van driver problem too, if mm -hmm. you're able to partner with another community. So you have those two options, right? right. You know, I, and I, I almost think the first way to go is to partner with an existing community. You don't have to worry about finding van drivers. Then you keep our van for whatever else you need. And we do have the one van driver who could go for special who things. Did, who did Bolton? I did. Did they indicate how many vans they had for you? Yep, somewhere. That was a long time ago, but I'll look at the paper. Um, so they have a dr one driver three days a week, and then they did have some per diems. One driver three days a week, yeah. and then they had some per diems. To back. Some per diems. Okay, I yep. thought you said something about how many yep. vans they had. So. Those were, those were our has two WRTA vans. I think they had their own van as well. And with WRTA, they said uh, that they had a woman that had to go to a specific doctor out of the area. Mm -hmm. And what they did is they just called WRTA and explained the situation. And they said, fine. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm. They, I have to say, they, they did seem like they would be very accommodating, much more so yeah. than I honestly expected. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be more cut and dry. Nope, this is our catchment area. This is our catchment area. And it was, you know, they, they were friendly. They they were yeah. open. I, that was I the was... impression I think we were given ah. from somebody. I can't remember that that is, is their sort of take on it. Yeah. And the fact that you had this meeting and it sounded like it went. I think it would be crazy not to try it. I mean, we're not signing our life away, right? If it doesn't work, we could go back to yeah. our one four driver. Right. And you said how many? So so they would provide the van. We just pay for gas and they maintain the van. Yeah, Correct. Yeah. That's if we got our own van. And that's a 16 to 18 passenger van. So okay. that I don't know if it would make sense for us to start there. Yeah. Um, or initially we could partner with a community if another community was willing to um, partner. Yeah. And they would help us speak to the other adjacent communities and see if they could gauge interest and find a community that was willing to partner with us. Yeah. And then, because the only other issue is not, in addition to not being able to fill that 16 to 18 passenger van, you have to hire your own drivers, their yeah. town employees, you are paying the gas, but I understand there's a reimbursement that comes through too. 
So I, I don't know. With Clinton, they have two WRTA vans. One's for in-town rides, the other's for out-of-town rides. Oh, they talked about the mini bus or the, not the bus, what did they call it? A micro van or something? Or something. Yeah, yeah, that was smaller. And the WRT pays the town 85 to 90,000 a year to operate the vans. So I'm guessing, and we didn't quite get into these deep level of details. Yeah, My guess they would be them. they would pay Clinton or whoever else for taking us on and taking on that additional service. There would be an incentive yeah. to the yeah. partner community. Your point, uh, Kristen, about the uh, how easy they were to work with on the town's rep through the WRTA's uh, Citizens Advisory Board, I think that's what it's called, and all of the meetings are that way. I mean, they really are working hard. They're listening to what people are saying. They're, this is uh, one of the towns, I think it's Southboro or Milford. They had an issue with uh, a whole bunch of uh, displaced persons or immigrants coming in and they were like in this community so they don't arrive here with vehicles to tool around in so what they worked out of um, a plan where they provided bus transportation for them yeah to this place. and this is all free of charge <laughs> to the rider correct yeah they get a lot of state funding and you know they can pass it on to the the cities and towns because Bolton has the mark transportation that arrangement too. Yeah, that's the Monachusett one. Yeah. And um, Lisa said it's not very popular because it costs the individual like three to five dollars for a ride, and it's really just too much if you have to. Yeah, because Mart is not a regional transit authority. I don't believe they're or, or yeah. they're. Massachusetts area regional mm -hmm. transit. <laughs> Maybe they are. <laughs> um, they're the ones that ran um, up in the Lidminster Fitchburg area yeah. that we were talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I've seen them up that way. Um, I, you know, I, I think probably it would be good to have some questions to go back to them with like this and see. You know, I, I, I think probably the main question they were asking initially was were we open to partnering with another community? Or did we, you know, think we had the capacity to go it alone? Um, you know, and I, you know, said, I don't want to speak for anybody. And I, Bob doesn't want to speak for anybody. So obviously bringing it back here to the COA to have that discussion. Um, you know, I do like the idea of it being easier and us not really having to manage it for the number of rides you have. And then if you start to really, people be realize it's available and more and more people start to use it, then maybe you bring the program in-house at that point. But they said the van driver problem is statewide. It's it national. The first thing that I see when I look up Mart is. Yeah, they can't yeah. find drivers. We're They're offering a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. So, we, I, in my program, we usually have 23 to 25 drivers. We were down to 10 and we could get none. So or if they if we hired somebody two weeks later they just walked out the door but we checked with uh the rta about wages for the drivers and yeah. we're, we're right in there we're yeah. in the zone yeah 18 to 20 and we pay 18 21. bolton for pays 19 yeah. so i think we're yeah i think yeah oh, i mean our program bolton i think we 19. pay 21. yeah that's what lisa said well, but I think we pay 21, but that's in town. Yeah, so. 19 an hour. So I'm not sure about the 18 to, what did you say, 18 to 20? I thought they said 18 to $20 an hour for, no, no, oh, same, the 16 to 18. 16. Do they have anything smaller? Compared to what we have now, that's big. Six more than we have in the present van, which is presently hauling two people at a time. Right. Yeah, right. yeah Victoria, no, sure. and you probably know better, there isn't a lot of volume that goes, right? Oh, God, no. This is this is just me. Oh, that's what they asked this us for. Very, very Data. Few people. I mean, they, 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 yeah. this lady, and she goes in spurts. <clears throat> he goes to the supermarket. Is that a German? He goes to the supermarket most weeks, and then occasionally a medical. That's that's the thing about yeah. out there. So this, this guy once a month, and uh, yeah, two months. And, you know, it's all the same. It's people. like. Six or seven unduplicated. And they're all Hudson, Concord. However, if North you World. add other statistics to that, I mean, mm -hmm. Silver Neighbors offers rides to its members. They're free of charge. The, the 
volunteer uses his or her own car, Joe the Neighbors supplements the insurance on it so they're covered for anything, and the, and the volunteer pays for the gas. The only thing the volunteer does not pay for is tolls or parking garage fees. Mm -hmm. But typically they take somebody to say Emerson and then wait for an hour yeah. for their appointment and then take the person home. And there is, I didn't bring the statistics, but there are quite a few people. And there's not, no one's ever Berlin. turned away. There's enough to, to meet the need. The stipulation always is, first, we have to find a volunteer who has the time and wants to do it right then. Yeah. We don't, it's not a 100% guarantee, but I can't think we'll turn many, if any, away. Good. And cost is not an issue because they don't pay nothing. Peggy, can you send me that data or can I take a copy of it or because that's the first thing they wanted to see and I think you can have these you okay. know you can't have these okay <laughs> <laughs> you got these I mean if you want to scan them and give them back to me it's, I it's would be happy to do that because that's the first thing that I think will help them to determine do we have the volume mm -hmm. to go it alone or mm -hmm. you know do we start with a, a partnership because obviously it's an investment too for for them i mean sure. i don't think they're going to say oh you only do like three trips a week well here have a 16 to 18 passenger yeah, van volume, like that that right? doesn't make sense right. i mean you know we don't. right yeah. I, Vans? They did have smaller vans, but they made it sound like the vans they used for the senior centers were the bigger ones. Uh, but some senior centers had a bigger van and a smaller van. So that's a great question. I made I made a note to ask that. Do they have any smaller vans? And then how is it funded if we go on our go it go it alone versus collaborating with another town? Yeah. Well, I mean, you talk about Clinton City Center. They have 100 to 150 people per day going to the senior center. So, the so they're the using the van to pick them up to bring them to the senior well, center because that's yeah. what most of the senior centers. Yeah, somebody would be good. Yeah. We said, yeah, yeah. Well, it's right, hard. right, right, right. And in terms of cooperation, we live in a nice place because it's Bolton would is very cooperative. Clinton is very cooperative. North Road is very cooperative. Yes, is very cooperative. Clinton and Bolton. Mom runs. Clinton and the yeah, daughter is right, 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 right. So there's good collaboration there. And I've never heard anybody in any of those four places say anything but, <laughs> sure, let us know how we can work together and happy. And they do that with the show of the neighbors, which isn't even a public group. So mm. they say, yeah, they refer people. You know, these people are going to need some medical. Can you help them with a ride? I know I when I was in Hudson, you know, she was talking a lot about the collaboration with everyone else but us. And I don't think that was, you know, we're not going to collaborate with you. I just think there wasn't. We haven't asked. We haven't mm. asked. That's right. Yeah. But, you know, the, the program for dementia is quite, mm. you know, involved in multiple centers. Um, yeah. So, and maybe if we if we get to a place where our director can actually initiate some um, activities, yeah. that would yeah. increase our volume if people need to be picked up to come to activities, right? Yeah. 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 It would, and it also would help us with the uh, willingness to accept us as part of their bigger community. Right. Yeah. I've never heard anybody say they were turned away at Northborough or Hudson, Bolton, or Clinton. Yeah, Clinton averages eight people per trip on their vans. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Yeah, the, and this is really helpful, mm -hmm. too, to have the, the background information and see, I mean, I think next steps on this are to ask some of these questions, to give them the trip data, because that's what they asked for to see. You notice that each one of those trips, though, is so if what? So I go to pick them up and take them someplace is one ride. One ride. To bring them back is another ride. Okay. That's the way they do it. Okay. We do. So Lancaster leases an 11 passenger. Oh, they do. They don't have okay. their own. Yeah. So we all this. Did you get a copy of this? Too? I did. Yeah. Yep. We we each took a town and did an interview. Yeah. Same. This is okay. great. Um, yeah. I just had to go back and again refresh. I do refresh. I know. Well, that's when you asked me that question. I it was a long time ago. I don't remember. Um, but one thing I wanted to remember now that it's refreshing my mind, we had talked about the fact that the um senior or the COA senior center software that just disappeared from oh. our um i think it, maybe we can talk about that there would be value in getting that back before our new director starts and then you know 
I know Lisa, uh, Lisa Dion at Bolton had said she would show somebody how to use it. You hmm. know, if we, I can just set that but don't up. Don't we still have it? It's not a matter that we don't have it. It's the license of the yeah. annual. Oh, it agreement. expired. I believe it expired. It, I'm sure it did. You're so probably right. Yep. The, we'd have to, I might leave that for the new person, only that they would need to look at the budget, make sure there's funding. And then if there is, then they could reinstitute that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the cost is yeah, for the I annual agreement. Oh, for the yeah. annual. I want to say it was seven or $800. It and that was, was part of the reason. Expensive. It okay. was not. There is specific. We could probably go back software. and find the emails. Yeah. Well, if I right. find it, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you because I see them. It's all, it's all in my. Is, is I know. I think it's a great control. idea. Yeah. And if so it Kate wasn't able to see all the data, must so you don't have to gotten a message or didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. But we don't either, right? Kate, you for voting. You, you, anything? We have no, you asked. You have a form. Apparently, they did, and then it just it just that's what everybody said, and then it ran out. What? We never used it. Oh. We never used it. Holly. It was Holly. Holly was the one who did it because I, I don't know how many of us went, but I did sit in on the training just because I was fascinated. I wanted to see what it was. Yeah, you were there. I was in. Um, it was a nice concept, but we just never went anywhere with that's it. We just bad. never used but it. But I know right. Hilton we Hudson really and in Bolton, they right. said. Oh, well, that's true, too. Yeah. About doing this without this software. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Except we can, we thought about doing it, apparently. Yeah. But they said it's very, it's very valuable. And and they came in, they trained us. They said yeah. they would help set up everything. Yeah. And we were going to do it because it was going to be an easier way to track everybody who came. To well, their, and you can see. Oh, well, I'm sure there's a way to do it, but. You have all yeah. the data yeah. for that, yeah. you know. New people are on the band. What was it called again? It all manually. My, I, I have it written down. Center. Oh, yeah, yeah, my senior center. Yeah. yeah. My center. Okay. In Clinton, they had an elderly oh, man that went missing. That. And uh, the police came to the center to see the data from my senior center to see where he frequented. Uh, oh, really? And all yeah. kinds of information there that they did not have. I so, wonder, too, a lot of the softwares now, you can load photographs into the yeah. softwares yeah. so that if that were to happen, we would have a, a photograph oh, yeah. of the individual, that kind of thing. Yep. So, I mean, and we now haven't spent any money on salary for for these number of months. So True. So there, well, and payroll and expenses are different line items, but come May, we can do a line item transfer. So okay. that is a possibility okay. as well. Um, you know, I think we probably would, would want to get somebody on board though, and have them look at everything comprehensively and set that up. I think it does sound like it's a good idea and it's something that could mm -hmm. be useful. Um, I hate to just like give somebody something and then they go, oh, I, maybe I have this idea. You know, well, I think it would be good to give them an opportunity. Experience at this. Is, yes. Just say we're no. hoping. That we is just true. say this is okay. okay. We'll 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 get the program. program. I'll look into it. I, I think we have the program, but times. <laughs> you have to have the license to right, have it updated, activated, whatever you need for your annual, I don't know, it's software. So it may actually be that you can't log into it because it's software if you don't have the license agreement. It's probably it may not be hard. Like it may be something that's actually installed on the computer. It may be like a software where you log in through the cloud or something. Yeah. One thought in the back of my mind, I keep harping on the show the neighbors, but they, the show the neighbors, we call it village to village, which are over 300 organizations, similar organizations all over the country. They have a lot of technology. <laughs> when they say, how come you don't have to be members and pay this membership fee per year? One of the expenses is belonging to village to village and mm. accessing training and so forth in the computers that are used to keep track of all sorts of things, statistics that you're talking about. And I wonder if there's any sharing. I know in like an EMR that you can, you know, if you, if it's your patient, you can access what the, happened at the Brigham, you know, I wonder if there's any sharing across programs in a, in a software Maybe. like that. It could be. Well, I think it's definitely something, you know, to look into and, you know, there was the more to that program I remember than we were going to use. There were fobs, I, I, I remember, I remember there was a lot, lot more oh, yeah. that we were just going to do the basics. Fobs so we didn't get, get into really the training expensive. of all the extra stuff, but there was, there was, it sounded like it was yeah, a lot. Yeah. I know both Hudson and, and Bolton said they use it extensively. Mm -hmm. And when I was asking questions when I was in Hudson, that's what she was pulling up and just 
viewing the data at me from, you know, what was popular? Oh, here, let me look. Oh, I remember, you know, she had all the data on attendance at this program that wasn't really turned out to be not very popular. You know? Right. Well, and I think the data is going to be key when we talk about the job and the job description piece of it too, because that was some of the feedback that I got from the personnel committee is wanting to have the data to support the position and to support the hours. So I right. think that all dovetails really nicely together. Yeah. Um, just to circle back on next steps on the WRTA van be before we yeah. move yeah. on, I just wanted to ask, um, I guess the, the question for you all is, you know, if you're open to exploring the possibility of a partnership with another community, um, I would give them the data. Um, I would also ask the question about the size of the van. And um, I would say, you know, it's something we'd, we'd be open to exploring if that's, mm -hmm. you know, amenable to the COA, because so I feel like that would be potentially beneficial. In that case, another town would be providing the van and the driver. Yes. On this initial thing that we're doing. Yep. Yeah. The thing, one thing I like about that is right now we've got a 10 passenger van with two tie down capabilities, and we use it for two people on a trip, which is kind of goofy. Right. And bad for the environment, to, Bob. And wasteful. We yeah. Had, yeah. If we had somebody else providing the one and two and three passenger rides to medical appointments or shopping and so forth, in the van, not that the van's going to be used, you know, five days a week for going on trips all over the place, but it does leave the van much more available for doing trips. Right. Because people say, what do you do on a CO? What does a COA do for anybody? Yeah. yeah. The town of Clinton gave the COA a town SUV this year so they could transport clients when necessary. There you Maybe go. The town of Berlin could give us one. Well, some of the CLA... You're one just sitting around? Yeah, no, I'd have it if it was not. <laughs> yes, after I get mine, you can... Okay, okay. Then yeah, yeah, just... Drive the I'll drive everybody. Actually, that would be fun. Some of the CLAs who buy things... Hudson bought their vans. Yes, one of them. And they also did a large part of the extension on the senior center. That's right. And Clinton says they have a very supportive... Group, not the um, what is it? The friends of the COA, they say the angels, mm, which one is not it? so much. Well, I was reading something about the bridge in the newspaper. The agent they angels, <laughs> they, what? they don't want to go that road. Well, <laughs> Hudson loves their friends, friends. Yeah, yeah, they love them, and they, they, they yeah, they have a lot of fun. They can also, they can make sure. Oh, yeah, you have to keep it separate. Yeah, they can do a lot, though, that the town can't do. They can fundraise, which is huge. Yes. They can also do certain things that aren't subject necessarily to um, state regulation or local regulation. You know, they can make donations. And so we had like a, we had a, a historical, we've got a historical building in my former town and then the society was actually helping to fund the repairs. They would make a donation to the town so that the commission had the money to make the repairs to the building. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes having those friends of groups are, are really great. So that's something worth looking into if there's interest in starting that here. It's a little problem in Burl and one of the, one of the suggestions had been made that the senior Burl and senior citizens as a group could possibly be a kind of support group and I definitely get the feeling from them that they're interested in proposing and maybe running some specific programs during the year, which this is what one of the things we do do as senior citizens do, but not interested in being a support group and just ginning up money for uh, activities at the COA. You mean like running their own programs? Like, yeah. well, that should really programming should come through the COA for that. I mean, you could you could at, have them come in, but you are all responsible for determining the programming that happens, you know, through the the town. Yeah. So they, at present, they do their own programs. They do. What did they do this year? They did the honky tonk piano man. They have a painting class coming up. They yep. did. The tour. Christmas Marie in or, Berlin. Did they do twinkle tour. They did twinkle tour uh, for two or three years. Yeah. Much work to too few writers. It's gonna be nice to collab. That's the collaboration right. kind of piece that we've been talking yeah. about too. Yeah. But I mean, I I wouldn't want necessarily to to have you know the the CEO. You guys are really like the advisory board to the town. So I wouldn't necessarily want to say 
to a nonprofit group, you can come in, use town resources to run town programs, because then we get into insurance issues mm -hmm. and, you know, making sure we have to quarry people and all. When you're running programs through the town, you know that everything's being set up the way that it needs to be set up because we have to be so specific with how we handle everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could certainly bring in some of their programming if it's vetted, but I would, you know, definitely want to make sure that that's something that gets vetted through the director and the COA. Mm. Yeah, I think um, Victoria did co-sponsor a few events okay. where she helped with publicity. Yep. And, and she got the town's rate on the 1870. Yep. And so collaboration is great too. Like I know Parks and Rec sometimes, uh, Rec, uh, Rec Committee will partner and do different things. And it's just when you make it a town event or a co-town event, then you have the flavor of the town and all of our yeah. responsibilities. And the, the problem with attaching the town to things sometimes is we're the ones with the deep pockets, right? So some kid goes to an event, falls down, breaks their ankle. They're suing the town. They're not coming after the Berlin's senior citizens group. Yeah. You know, we're the ones with the $17 million budget. So that's why we have to make sure all of the insurance and the quarries and all, that's why all of that pain in the next stuff that everybody hates dealing with becomes a reality because if anyone's getting sued, it's us. Mm -hmm. And I just worry about liability constantly because that's my job. Okay. Yeah. So back, to, <laughs> back to bus again. Yes. Uh, so you're the statistic about yep. the ridership. Yep. Yep. Of the mechanics of us being in a cooperative arrangement with another town would be. Yep. And how soon that could happen? Well, it sounds like there's interest perhaps in both. So maybe I could say, you know, we're, we're, we'd be interested in potentially exploring with another town, but we'd also like some more information on how it would work if we had our own. That's kind of, if, that, if I'm characterizing that correctly, that seems to be the consensus I'm getting from the group. Okay. I, I can certainly ask that question. If it's if the van is ours, if they give us the van, we have to get the drivers, we have to pay them their town employees, and yeah. we have to provide the fuel. And do we have to also dispatch or they dispatch? They dispatch. Okay. But we wouldn't be dispatching if it was with another town because that town already has a dispatching system set up. Or they're dispatching through WRTA. Yeah. Yeah. I thought the whole thing was they would do dispatch. Yes. Yeah. Because I personally would rather not that be our director's job to dispatch transportation. It seems or, like or repair the van. He does it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just don't know that the volume justifies the expense or the amount of time that you're asking a COA director to spend on that when that person could be doing programming and grants and all of these other yeah. things. Does it make sense? I mean, there's there's great finesse in dispatching, so I don't want to disparage a dispatcher at all. But I, I, I'm I'm assuming it's not the talent bunch that we're looking for in a director. Right. You know, no. I'd rather them have some other talents. Right. I want that like creativity and, you know, you know, the self-starter kind of right. we can get out yeah. there and, you know, be an we advocate and yeah. absolutely like a cheerleader. Yeah. Somebody who gets the town and gets how dispatching works in town is, can help. is a huge asset to the director. Absolutely. The director to go, oh, God, if I thought about the van this week. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, also, I can say we're, you know, opening to partnering, um, but we'd also, we were also just curious if they offer smaller vans to smaller towns and how that works. Yeah. yeah. And if it somehow bolishes up that plan, if we retain our own van and use that with our driver for other activities. Ah, like yep. transporting to uh, to the polls, transporting to well, the yeah, van. and that's our van paid for by the town. So they, I, they, I don't see how they could tell us how to use that. I, you know what I mean? I think right. that we could use that for anything as long as we have a driver. That's that's yes. the only thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Is this 
Well, I don't think do, do we vote now or wait till she gets more information to vote on which way we want to go. It sounds to me it's I more. I think I heard a motion that we should wait until we get some more information. <laughs> well, did second. All in favor? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. We'll go on a fact finding mission. We, Kristen, you will. I'm the, sorry. the proverbial we. Ah, yes. <laughs> the royal we. Thank you. Okay. Next. Do we have anything else to say on Tai Chi? I know we still have people coming to that too. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, still running. Well, here in Berlin, we call it Tai Chi. <laughs> <laughs> Just to differentiate from the other lower class communities around us, we just call the Tai Chi people. Yeah. All right. So, COA event ideas. Oh. What events has the COA got on the fire? Well, we've done. Grab and go meals. Do we have uh, another one coming up? I'm not sure. I'm not aware that there's anything on the schedule. When was the last one we did? That was in May, right? Was it June? June? No. Was it May? It was nice when we were standing out in the driveway. I know that. <laughs> okay. Sometimes. I think it was in May. We weren't being it could have been June. Covered with ice. Exactly. Okay. Do you need, who does the grab and go though? Is that? the director do you need a director on on board to do that i, I that's what i was thinking okay. yes yeah. as kind as peggy has and generous has been with her time i don't want to say hey by the way do you want to do this too <laughs> well right right yeah should we wait? yeah i i honestly and i mean i'll do whatever but i i, I think uh, i'm hoping that a director will be posted soon the job uh, that maybe we wait before we start booking on our own activities and allow the director to bring that, some creativity and then support them. I like that. Um, I do like that idea, but it doesn't hurt to, you know, if the director comes, so what are you guys interested in? That's one of the things Victoria said. So what, what is it you're interested in doing? What is it you want to propose? I don't think it hurts for us to have in mind. Oh, I thought you meant we were going to start things. I'm sorry. We're not, we're I not misunderstood saying, too. Yeah, we're not going to say on November 7th, we're going to do blah, blah, blah. Bingo, yeah. yeah. Bingo but, is always very popular. Singo, somebody said on those forms. Um, apparently, it's singing bingo to the 60s and 70s was one that people referenced specifically. I don't know how that works, but I read the comments on the, the survey, and it's called Singo. I think me at my friend's Marion thing. I have it at my house, so I'll look at it. And it was Singo. Yeah. It's always fun when there's music involved. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this is something where we want to try to get all the ideas on the table at this meeting, but I think we should be thinking about some sort of activity because... I mean, I forgot. Can I, uh, really? Yeah, yeah, really? She used to organize all kinds of things. Is she important? Okay, Pat, what's the matter? I mean, it's great to have a picnic in South Province of Phoenix. I don't know if we, I don't know how they used to pay yeah. for it. Well, okay, doing another grab and go would be a good idea, probably, because those have been well. So, I mean, I think with the new director comes on board, it would be a, don't you think? Yeah, I think we can schedule something like that. But then, well, I, I, I don't know if you want to schedule it yet before we know when this person's going to, I mean, this could take. Oh, but how long does it take to boil potatoes? Well, no, that, I can't that get mean... back before the personnel committee. It looks like before the 18th of September, which is not ideal, I know. Mm. But um, unfortunately, I'm away next week, and the chair is away the week after that. So it's just rough this time of year as part of the issue. But my plan would be I, I redrafted the job description. I've worked out the pay recommendation schedule, and it does leave funding for that potential second admin person, as they were mentioning, if anyone watched the personnel committee meeting, which I can go into when you're done this, I'm not trying to steamroll ahead. But um, yeah, it, it, we want to get that done as soon as possible. It is going to take a little bit of time. We want to make sure we get the right person. Don't we have to advertise in house for two weeks or something? You can, you don't have to, okay. according to the policy manual. Yeah. So is it still full time? Full 30 hours is what they're wanting. They, well, they wanted 25 to 30. I'm really pushing for 30. 30. So what does that mean? Is it still benefited? It is. Anything over 19 hours is benefited. 
that's right. Yeah, that's exactly. Somebody about me as a personnel committee needs to say none of the time I own a full time director, but in my case they do. They did. They but they also I think they, what they were starting to say, if I miss some, if I understood correctly, was that mm -hmm. no towns have just one person working for the COA. So they thought it would be better to have a part time and part time person. And they said some of the smaller ones have that. So you always have a backup. And oh, that's absolutely a great idea, but it's not true that none of, the none of them have a full time. Definitely does. Again, yeah. they're six times our size. Right. Yeah. That's seven, eight. Boy, but Bolton boy, has, boy. I think Lisa works four days, and then she has an assistant. Yeah, she does both. a social service. Right. A lot of them, believe it or not, because of the hours of the senior center, they may be a 30 or 35-hour position. I don't know if that's more of what they meant. Bolton's both the director and assistant director are 30 hours. But there you go. Yeah. And that is that is sort of full-time, but for the personnel committee, 40 hours is considered full-time. So that yeah. might be what they meant. I think Hudson is full-time. Oh, well, I wouldn't be surprised. There, yeah. How many times but there, are they? And, uh, yeah. So the yeah. personnel committee is suggesting 20 to 30 hours. 25, 25 to 30. 30. Sorry. I said I wouldn't be comfortable recommending anything less than 30. Yeah. Um, so they asked yeah. me to retool it. Um, sorry, do you want me? I just, just totally steamrolled over your events conversation. Do you want me to jump no, into okay. this? No, we were, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we're saying we can stick in our heads the uh, our to do list. Just to think of some events we'd like to see happen so when the director comes in we can say here's some stuff we're thinking about in your experience what have you tried what is your you know yeah. what's your experience or what it maybe if they don't have specific experience in this It'll be you know what's there. where 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 does their creativity lead them um but yeah and i mean we i think we all got suggestions could, from the other coas right that's yeah, awesome. so well, I think we could even just suggestions that yeah. we want yeah. things on yeah. the table. That's why we did that. Yeah. To see what they yeah. what they are doing. So nobody could say, well, that's a big one. Is that does anything. presentations what? was a theme. And what, what I just handed Karen. Uh, um, so, so well, would you have these? we could do some small things downstairs. If we that's have 1870 up, town hall, you have um, oh, the pain in the neck. Well, the front stairs are wicked. We're but, working on that. But if you think an escalator up it, but the uh, no escalator, escalator. <laughs> but in escalator? actually replacing the stairs and looking at possibly stairs on the side too. So, yeah. and that way, to. people who are really needing the handicapped parking, and we're working on putting a parking and paving that. Yeah, ramp right, in the right. back, but we have to fix the drainage issue before we can do that, which we're working on as well. With yeah. Bullard. Bullard. So I'm working with a historical Bullard. commission. Bullard. Yep. Yeah. And we do have money appropriated for that through ARPA. And for people who are not handicapped, but nonetheless want to use the elevator because the stairs are kind of weird. Yeah. It's a long hike. Can can they them. get can you get dropped? Oh, you can't get dropped off. Yeah, that's true. Right. Well we'll have to take uh on Gelder and tells them have a drive through uh, driveway. We'll build a, a skywalk from, from the municipal offices over to 1870. <laughs> but okay. but I, I just wanted to mention what I handed yeah. Karen were the, the four surveys that you had shared with me, um, Peggy, that the Powder House News got back. Well, on. I was going to ask you, where did that come from? Okay. So, um, yes, that was in the Powder House News. And so if you want to add that or attach that to the minutes, there were some. Me? Um, you let me make a copy. Okay. <laughs> oh, you can have them, or and and make a. I can bring them back and make a copy or whatever you want. I'll run it through my machine. Okay. But um, the um, they had some great suggestions on there. A couple. That's where I heard about the Singo because I had never okay, heard about the Singo that. before. Yeah. Um, so you didn't get many, but if you're talking about events, you might want to take you know and add a few of the suggestions yeah. that were on the the comments on there. I actually want to create a little homework for the board members, which is, and we've done this before, uh, I've found nothing works as effectively as calling up somebody on the phone and talking mm -hmm. with them. Uh, we can go up, uh, when COVID was here, mm -hmm. we divvied up the list and had people call a big chunk of that uh, body of citizens over 60 and ask how they're doing, how's their health, and so a lot of them said, you know, I'm fine, my grandkids live there, and blah, 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 but I'm so grateful you called. Yeah, Thanks very much. That would be a copy for everybody. But I think in addition to that sort of thing, 
have a very short list Survey. of questions and call yeah. people and say, what kind of activities do we not have that you would like to see happening here in Berlin? Yeah, I think that's so a good idea. Want, I know I can go to Clinton. I know I can go to Hudson. I don't want to go out of town. I want to have it here. Yeah, And I right want to meet to people house. in town. Yeah, I think that's part of the impetus is if you want to make meet people that live in your town and there's nothing offered, well, you know, 19 car is great for that. But. Yeah, but do the seniors all take? Uh, is a that lot. a lot? Seniors, a lot. It is like, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's most of the seniors. So why? Yeah, I don't know. Are doing anything there? Uh, well, they have a lot of things they schedule there. They were, <laughs> they were offered. Yeah, and the previous director was not. Of a cooperative frame of mind, it was, it was kind of like you know, this is my bailiwick. Okay, it should be revisited with the new director. I believe it, it. Let me put it this way: it will be oh, revisited okay, with go. the new director because I really genuinely feel that we can do a better job at collaborating yeah. with the other yeah. entities, and we shouldn't be duplicating efforts, right? right? So, if there's already space available, if there are already programs available, we should be tapping into those existing yeah. spaces and programs. Um, so that's one of the conversations that I will be having. And I can tell you, um, you know, there's 1870, there's 19 Carter. I, you know, have certainly had some conversations with Evie, um, you know, about really trying to kind of like bring together all of the groups that work with seniors. And that's one of the things I put in the job description. So you can see what's available and then you can tell where the gaps are. Right. And perhaps that's where you develop programming. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that's a great, like in the first three months, you know, getting people together, then doing outreach. Go up to Northbrook Village, talk to people. Yep. What do you guys need? What what yep. don't you have? What do you like that you have? Yep. Oh, well, th this program's offered, but I would never use that. You know, what doesn't, what works, what doesn't work? That do kind they of have thing. a, like, is it possible there to, at, at Northbrook to just like we could bring cookies and blah 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 and and have people come down and talk to us is that something Thank that you. would yeah, work? Yeah, oh, right. in Northbrook Village. Yeah. I met some nice people walking <laughs> there and wanted to give me their number to come visit and have a tour. Oh, I've never actually been home because I'd like to go. I was in that place the other day. Were you? Yeah, I haven't been. There. Just how, really how did you do that? Because the door's locked and there's no on-site person. No, the door's not locked. You can the front you door. Can, you yeah, can go in and ring the bell. I had an appointment. Yeah, that's how. What, now, what's the difference? Northbrook one. They're what? separately owned. Oh, oh we have yeah. that. Yeah. I can say that. But they, uh, I don't think that's the word Peggy you <laughs> It's a yeah. separation. Oh. <laughs> I was here first. I do and I do too. Silly thing that goes on sometimes in places like that is no book two is saying they're not very friendly over there. We we get yelled at because we're parking here in this place right now. I think the dog's gonna oh, for subs the door shut. Oh. oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, when we have because when you open it. it and I just took her off before we met. So, oh, no, she's when we had the hockey town piano man. Yeah. People came from both one and two, and they had a great time and enjoyed it. Yeah, I see. There needs to be a little more. Yeah. Yeah. Will they, would they let us do activities there? No, I think was the guy I ran into, yeah. David, that's all I know. Mm -hmm. David and I'm not sure, or Martha. I was walking my dog and it's on Sub Street <laughs> because you can now. <laughs> but, uh, he was telling me about the community room over there and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just have never been, been over there. They've been doing their own stuff lately. Mm. Well, the most was one board that has done holiday dinners sometimes. And, you know, there's 40 apartments, so you'd expect you might get 30 people. First time we did, and they're all cooked by the members of the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 16 people. What? Mm -hmm. But we also say if you if you can't make it to walk it down here for it, let us know. We'll mm -hmm. unbox it and send, carry it over to your place. But yeah, yeah. sometimes it's hard to pry people out of their stuff. Yeah. That's why that's why Berlin seniors, when they did the honky tonk piano man and the art class, they did it in the community room at Northbrook. 
too, because they figured, how hard is that? At Once least out the door, get on the elevator. Did they, they come? This is a newsletter from our... Yeah. Thank you. It seems like Bolton that successful because they're embedded. Yeah. They have a great Well, okay, that dovetails gonna... nicely into the job description if you want to talk about that. Yes. Thank you. I have a half hour. Just want to let you know. I'm sorry. Usually we don't uh, get this on. We've had so much to talk about. All right. I have 45 minutes. So I, I, redid the job description yep. and most of it was a what i would call like a reorganization of what was in there into categories you don't have printed copy do you um i didn't see it till i got here don't okay. but it's what okay. i can do is i can give email. you an overview of it yep. um what i did was i basically broke the job duties into five um categories so the first category i had was outreach um, which is what we were just talking about um, reach out to Berlin seniors to discuss their needs and determine gaps in services. Yeah. Um, case I've got it right here. I just pulled it up. Oh, perfect. Yeah, no, I just yeah. Case management services as needed. Referrals. Yeah. So, um, if they need to go into somebody's homes um, to be able to assist with any type of, you know, situation that they might see there, if they that's to help basically referring to services so if somebody needs help there they're not actually providing the service itself but it would help inform referrals so if someone's like at a hoarding situation or you know if they can go out to the home we call it an outreach worker mm -hmm. in lester but it would be someone calls up and they're like you know my mother is just like in her home when we don't know what's going on and could someone just go over and kind of check on her and see what's up and then you would kind of say okay well here's some services we can refer that person to so not doing the work or doing like a social service thing but more on the referral side mm -hmm. um and then obviously reporting to any state entities um if there's an issue on wellness or at risk situations so that's kind of the outreach piece of it and then the next part of the position that I saw was, I called it connect and collaborate with existing programs and services. So this is about building relationships with state and local officials, local COA directors, community leaders. And then I added a piece to this about medical professionals. I had a really good conversation actually with um, somebody who worked um, doing case management for seniors for about 20 years. And they said the biggest thing they see is when, you know, you really need to connect with the medical professionals in the community because they know what the seniors need when they leave, um, you know, whether it be a doctor's appointment or they leave the hospital or they leave a rehab center. Like, what are those services that, that they want to be connected up with? And like, sometimes people don't ask. And she was saying one of the hardest things is sometimes you have to hear about it through the grapevine and you have to be proactive and reach out to that person and send them a letter like if the if ambulance comes to your house and picks you up because you had a fall mm -hmm. and say they notice something that perhaps you could be assisted with being able to actually reach out and say hey just wanted to let you know I'm the COA director I'm here happy to meet with you if there's any you know mm -hmm. services I can refer you to because people are proud and people don't mm -hmm. want to ask for help mm -hmm. so sometimes you have to take that extra step of showing them that you know you're here and what you can do so the medical piece became a big piece yeah of that, that people do have on like four or six something i mean i can't believe that there aren't others in berlin who have food insecurity. well but the food pantry is well used from what i understand news on wheels personally that these days it's well like both get package on Tuesday at one of the sites. So there's seven recipients, six sites, Thursday. <clears throat> Excuse me, there is one more person who gets the stuff. And all the other days, they just don't eat? Well, well they get cases, several meals, right? When they... In, well, in some cases, they'll get three that I have, get two frozen meals and one hot meal, and then they get two packs of uh, bread fruit and whatever, uh, not M&Ms, <laughs> see? So that's what they get. And some other people on Thursday, maybe the same people on Thursday will get three or four frozen meals. 
So it does. So we it do. Ties them over. It carries them. Yeah. How is that determined? What they get? What they ask for. Oh, they okay. The cake they need. Okay. They so they say I want four. We call them. Massachusetts. I mean, no, it isn't Massachusetts. Lake Opportunity Council, which used to be Massachusetts Opportunity Council. Yeah. And they said we need we need assistance with our meals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Meals and wheels are provided to people who have difficulty preparing nourishing meals for them. Oh, I know. I make That's referrals for people. For, I know. I just wasn't sure how, how the people in Berlin are communicating. Like, why is it one day they're getting two frozen and another day four? They asked for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't. That's what I was trying. Yeah. Two weeks. Oh, that was the answer. <laughs> or they may say that they need six days a meal, six days a week of meal. Mm -hmm. And since they're only delivered two days a week, one day they get right, two, another day they get they're four. Delivered two days a week. Okay, yes, mm -hmm. they always do it once with them. I wish they'd get the orders right, though. That would be oh, helpful. Sure. Um, yes. You know, and then another part of the, um, you know, connecting and collaborating is we talked about meeting monthly with groups that serve seniors to discuss issues um, and anticipated needs to avoid those redundancies. Obviously, managing the current programs that we have, uh, COA van, Meals on Wheels, health clinics, and exercise classes, and then assisting seniors in, fi in filing applications for assistance programs or getting information on services um, and help navigating the healthcare system, uh, which would be more the shine, I think, the piece of it on the insurance. But I see perhaps this person being able to get shine certified and assist with those kinds of things perhaps as well because it, it, the interesting part of the conversation that i had was the health piece is really critical to aging in place mm -hmm. and being able to understand what services are available to folks after they leave a medical facility or after they've had some type of surgery you want to be able to have at least a basic knowledge of what those services are to connect people up with that too, because that's what enables you to stay in your home. And navigating that is horrendous. Oh, I'm sure it is. We yeah. have a person right now who's getting out of the hospital. She needs to go to doctor's appointments. We need appointment at the doctor. She cannot get out of the house all by herself. She wants a band ride. Right. She can't get out of the house by herself. <clears throat> and she can't get you know into the hospital or whatever by herself. Our band drive is not allowed do to it. do that. Right. So what, what do you recommend? So what I would say to, if you were the COA director, whoever is the CO director, I would say call up one of the hospitals or one of the medical facilities in town and ask them what they do in those circumstances and see if there are companies that help with it's that. It's an ambulance or company that, that does it, and they have a wheelchair van you can rent. There, See, yeah. there you it's go. It's expensive, though. Yes, it I is. was going to say it's, there's probably it, it a cost is to covered it. unless you have right. Mass Health. Mass Health is the only insurance that will pay for that. But mm -hmm. maybe the ASAP, if again, if you qualify, maybe the ASAP can provide an aid to go with someone. That's only as good as you qualify and you've already had the referral and you've done the intake. Yeah, that's a lengthy process. These right, days. but I mean, that's, this person getting them hooked up with the ASAP. No, but that, that would be okay. right. Um, and nobody in the room other than us know what an ASAP <laughs> is. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. So. It, Oh, so, go ahead. So we can call our ambulance people. Yes, you can. Like you that. can. Well, you can ask them, but they're not going to. Uh... Oh, okay. It's not for free. We don't do patient transport. So patient okay. transport is typically a different type of ambulance service. We are emergency response. So, but I think too, we have to sort of differentiate between providing the service and referring. And right. a lot of what we're talking about, this person doing is referring. And that's what you're talking about. So that would be referred to the um, the transportation services. That's not the town. There's ambulance Correct. companies. That's what we use when we, when we uh, have people that go to appointments. We don't provide yeah. transportation, but the, and the patients still have to pay unless they qualify for a, a stretcher because it's covered if it's medically necessary. If it's not medically mm -hmm. necessary, we schedule the, um, a wheelchair van through the ambulance company and the patients have to pay for it. Right. Like I know Ease Care, yeah. Vital. Looking for that, I mean, she's ready to go on our van. Mm. But when you don't have a qualified the person so where they can. are paramedics and they will literally go in, right. if there's stairs, they can mm -hmm. bump you down in the wheelchair bring you stay with you we don't want that liability oh, either yeah. to be honest oh, yeah. so like ease care can can neshoba neighbors help we assist somebody yeah. like help somebody walk out they can touch the person i do well. i think you should learn 
Yeah, I would. I, I'm just going to say on the record, I would advise against that for your individual. But yeah. there are places like Ease Care, Vital. There are actual yeah, there are, patient yeah, transport, yeah. and that's what they do. It's an ambulance, but they're just taking them to and from appointments for people that need extra care. So I would see this as a referral, and I I think we have to, you know be careful too about what we expect the town to provide in terms of services, which I know sounds mean, but I, I, I don't think it's the town's place to provide a lot of these services. I think it's to refer and to have the knowledge base because that's an excellent question. So I would want that person to be able to go out and research, hey, what do I do? And then the next time someone asks that question, uh, they've got a resource base of where to refer people to. And that that's kind of how I see it working. If they get frustrated, can't find a ride, they don't go to their appointment. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. It's why it's a key piece of PACE because the idea with PACE was in this capitated program to figure out what are all the obstacles to people getting the care they need, and transportation is one of those. And that's problems. one of the things the CUA yeah. director could do is help them enroll in PACE if they're going to do that. Yeah, that's well, the thing. Help them get there's you know serve. I don't know if Hearts for Heat services up here, but there's all different fuel assistance. I mean, there's all different yeah. kinds of programs that they you know, could Victoria refer to. Do a lot to. with the fuel assistance that I do know. Yep. Yeah. So like that kind I of stuff. A question on that one too. I mean, somebody's asking me for fuel assistance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I said Victoria did a lot with that. I don't got I do a lot of the community stuff. I do assistance, but she needs to get her um well her... I think it's Worcester Community Action Council, yeah. if I'm not uh -huh. mistaken. Um let me I'm actually just Googling fuel assistance Worcester yeah. County. Worcester Community Action Council. Um they they income qualify and assist people. Um with need and they have a website when you're in their area we should be nope we're not the heck <laughs> sorry just kidding oh if your community is not listed please click this link to contact an alternate agency for help who are they going to refer me to there montreal uh, greater montreal mass cap the massachusetts association for community action so maybe we're part of oh are we part of like northern northern worcester county something yeah Stir County Central, Central Mass, so it you know it's a little that's where my basis is. But uh, L I H E A P fuel assistance. Um, Island, stop. <laughs> There's state energy assistance programs too. So, and that's exactly the kind of you know thing that I would want to help with. What I might do is I might call over to Clinton or Bolton and ask who they refer people to for fuel assistance. I mean, that might be worth a, a yeah. phone call. And... The outreach. Mm. So yeah, that's... for something like that. But, yeah. but you know, really when, you know, poor Peggy gets to relax and not do this, um, that but that would be what you would see a, a COA oh, yeah. director do yeah. for sure. Yeah. You should play cards. I agree, that's important. Um, just to finish up the, the, the job description, um, advocacy I see as a part of this too, um, participating in efforts to expand and improve services, um, attending town functions and community events, be being out there, making, you know, the needs known, um, develop, and then developing programming to address gaps in services. So once you've done all these things and you get to know what's available, what's out there, what do people want? What do people need? Then you look at potentially creating some new services, applying for grants to implement those services. And advocates for a higher than 1% of the town's total budget for seniors. Correct. And then also I see, I see under programming um, assistant kind of developing strategies for seniors to age in place. I can't tell you how much I hear age in place. That is everywhere. That everywhere. Is so, and then the last one is day-to-day -day operations. The van, you know, the COA yeah. board, um, Corey checks budget, you know, all of that yeah. kind of stuff. So that's kind of how I've redone it. And then I ran some numbers. If we did 30 hours a week, we do have a class and comp plan. Um, and that pretty much tells us what we pay, which is nice. So if we did the first four steps, 
that would be at a range of $30.27 and 27 cents to $32.33 and 33 cents an hour. That's steps one through four. That actually at 30 hours works out to a salary of between 47,000 and 50,000. So plus benefits, not a terrible salary at all. Um, and then that actually leaves in the budget about 23 to 26,000 for potentially a 19 hour admin, which is what the COA board, what uh, COA board, the personnel committee was talking about. They thought up COA hours a little bit for the director, get somebody on board and then let that person see what the workload is like. And then maybe that person recommends bringing somebody in at a more administrative mm -hmm. level to handle some of the day-to-day -day stuff so that that person can work at the higher level of grant writing and you know yeah. case management and those kinds of things. So that and was that their recommendation. Could run bingo mm -hmm. or, you know, that we don't need a director. I mean, right, they, run they, the program, they, run a few programs, sure. Um, but you know. But then you have a backup because obviously the director is you know, gonna be sick sometimes. They're right. gonna need to take a vacation, you know, maybe a personal day here or there. And then you still have somebody in the office to be able to at least take the call or, you know, be able right. to say, we'll call you back within a certain amount of time. But their suggestion was, you know, it's a, you know, unfortunately it, they did feel the concern was, is there really enough for this person to do to represent 40 hours? And I think there is, and I really yeah. did try to go to yeah. bat for that. Um, but I think that it looks like we're going to have to compromise for right now at 30 and see where it goes from there. And then there's enough money left in the budget where you could either bring that up to 40 or you could potentially bring in a 19 hour a week, non-benefited administrative type person. And I think that's where the software comes in because mm. the you know, data we'll have the all data. the data to support what this person is doing. You know, I was trying to get that from Victoria sort of at the end because I was worried, is this just too much for one person? And we um, don't know because we don't have the data. And, yeah, it was very um, subjective, the information that I Correct. got back. So, And that was the real crux of, I think, the personnel committee's issue is they did not want to say, yeah, we need a full-time director without having the data. And I kind of said, well, this is like a chicken and an egg situation. Kind of have to have a full-time director who can track all of these things and can run a robust program before you're going to have the yeah. data to say that whether you're not supported. So, but, you know, their kind of feeling was, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of funding because we doubled the hours for the position. So wanting to make sure that there is hard data to, to justify it to the community. And I have to say a lot of that probably comes from, you know, when we look at the school, they're asking for more money, we're asking them to justify. So if someone comes and goes, oh, well, I see you doubled your budget for your COA slash social, ser social services person. Where's your need that documents, you know, where's your documented need for that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, then that's, September 18th looks like it's going to be the day. Um, I would like you and or anyone else that might want to come. Board. Yes. Yes. What thank you. Oh, thank you, Peggy. Cam, Cam, come here. <laughs> she, she seems like she does. <laughs> I think she wants a treat. She was over there sniffing her little uh, treats. Well, well, thank you, Peggy. Thank you. Well, thank you. We have one here, Powderhouse News. Thank you has disappeared, I believe, or are you going no. to it? Well, yes, yes and no. Powderhouse News is expanding. Um, so it's for a trial for a year, becoming a townwide monthly newsletter starting in October. And many thanks to Lori Fairbay and Dee in our office who are working on getting that up and running. We've worked on a schedule to get different boards and departments to at least quarterly put information in the newsletter and we're going to see how it goes and keeping all the senior stuff in there that's important as well but expanding it out a bit to include information about other town departments and is this are you just a virtual or is this paper great question so the idea that we pitched was to do it online to offer it to be mailed to those people who have signed up for mailing because you've run that in your last couple of newsletter hey if you want this mailed to you give us your address and from what i understand there's not a lot of people that have i think we had six 
yeah. that want to nail. And we can continue to, to advertise for that. I think we print them and we put them strategically in places in town. That's what we did in Leicester and it worked really well. We put them in the tax collector's office. We put them at the library. We put yeah. some at the church. We put maybe Carter. we use 19 Carter. We do the general store. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. can do, it's for so much cheaper if you're printing them and not mailing them. And then that solves our whole big problem with the bulk mailing yeah. permit nonsense. It's a lot of money. That's like, a lot. Of, were you ever here when we did the mailings? Did you help us do them? No. <laughs> no. Well, and I would say I it's, did it's, to put stickers on when we, we did the stamps. Oh, we did do we the did stamps. stamps. Well, yes. the other piece is we have a postage machine now here. So if it's under, I would say, 50 that we have to mail out every month, we can run them through the postage yeah. machine. Then we don't have to deal with the post office at all. Yeah, good. which yeah. I think would make That's, everybody happy. Well, I never dealt with them, but I heard. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a nightmare because <laughs> now it's labels. You have to put on print oh, labels right, right, and right, it's right. a whole. Yeah, yeah I so opt in idea myself is a good one because I think the way we were doing it before to opt out. People just didn't opt out. Correct. <laughs> Or it said, you know, call the office to opt out. Well, if I'm reading that at 10 o'clock at night, I forget about it by the exactly. time morning yeah. when someone's in the office. And it may not be until the first month when they don't get it in the mail. And then they pick up the phone and go, oh, Ooh. hey, can that be mailed to me? And then the, so we may get some more people that way, which would be fine. Maybe. I, I, I would Maybe. say anything under like 100 we could mail. Oh, my God. Here. You'll never get that many. No. You're not going to get that many, you think? That's so. awesome. But and what's wrong with leaving them even over at Northbrook? Oh, I see him doing us doing both. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. But yeah, leaving some at Northbrook, and yeah. and I think that's where you know you guys can help us right. too in defining some of the places that we yeah. you know would could put them. So as long as they get it, it doesn't matter if it's plan. addressed to them or they. Right. I, I'm not so even sure. Powder House now? It is. Yeah expanded powder house news well you know it's funny the one thing i hear over and over and over again is people want more communication in a more timely fashion right so you're making it monthly so it's a little it's more timely and if oh, we can get right. information out about also tax bills and different th you know and some of that was all obviously in this in the powder house when it was under the coa as well but then we can do like what does the assessor's office do what is the you know, fire, the fire department can come to your house and do in free smoke detector inspection. You know, just kind of getting more of that out FYI. or communicating information about maybe what's going to be at town meeting or there's so many different things that we could really do. You know, even just something like profile a town employee here and there or and still be able to do profiles on residents or businesses or things like that and mm -hmm. be able to mm -hmm. kind of keep the original spirit and intent of the newsletter but be able to get that out there and I remember I think it was my third day here there was a coffee talk at the select board and Paul McKelk got up and said what are you going to do about improving communications in the town and that always <laughs> stuck with me because that was the first question that someone asked me and I'm like oh okay that's a good point so the newsletter kind of started germinating from that and then also the led sign in the center um which you know ha has some controversy to it but um i think you know the more we can get information out in a timely manner and people are going online but i understand people also like things in hard copy so if you know if you're a shut-in or you really want it mailed to you no problem we can do that too the led sign in the center is a bit of a bummer because now it's just for town sponsored events. Yeah, it Whereas has it to, be. to be. If the Lions Club had something that was up there, if, uh, congratulating the school on their sports. I know. What's the birthday. controversy? People don't like the look of it, or people because it's now it's the LED. Town. Oh no, the the blinky sign is different. They're talking about putting a full like LED scrolling sign like it, it, downtown, well, like they're going to have at the school. So that passed at town meeting. They did amend the sign bylaw to allow for two of those, yeah. one at the school and one somewhere in the center of town. The issue with the blinky sign is anytime we use town resources for non-town purposes, we run up against problems. So according to Mass General Law, if we bought a signboard using town funds, it can only be used for municipal purposes. It's Scott likes to call it, we can't have nice things. And he is absolutely <laughs> correct. Unfortunately, you know, he, that's the way, not your Scott. No, Scott I, Hawkins. Your Scott Hawkins. <laughs> I, knew what you meant. I just oh, figured yeah, I'd yeah, clarify. Yeah. Well, um, you that, I was like, you're like, 
<laughs> no, and, and unfortunately, it's because then you'd have to advertise anything and everything that anyone yeah. wanted to put up there. And then yeah. you get into First Amendment yeah. stuff yeah. and you get into yeah. political stuff. So, like, if we allowed businesses to advertise, I would also have to allow you to put up your wacky political sign, too. I can't differentiate. So, say I allow signs on the common, yeah. just say. I have to allow all signs. Mm -hmm. I can't just say only business signs, not political. So you, you, this is where you yeah. get into the government has to be give fair and equal treatment to all of its yeah. citizens because they're all paying for it as taxpayers. So it's not fun. So I heard the word sign. Does that mean that we cannot put up signs advertising stuff down at the, at the road? We don't currently have a sign bylaw, so you're okay. If we That's were right. to have a sign bylaw, then you either allow all signs or you ban all signs. But we had people complaining. We ended up doing a sign by law in Leicester because people were complaining about political signs and the highway department was just taking them down because they were putting them on town owned property. Uh -huh. So, but, it, but then the, the people complained because they said, well, you're allowing Joe's barbershop to advertise on town owned property. What's the difference? And there isn't. So if you're going to allow that, then everyone gets to put their political campaign signs on town owned property too, which obviously you can see what kind of problems yeah, that poses. Programs and they want to advertise them so they have some signs. I can't because you're not a municipal entity. Right. It has to so be town. Oh, you yes, I can't advertise you on the blinky sign though. Because the blinky sign was bought with town money. You can go anywhere else you want. Good. I'm cool with that. I just have to be mean when it comes to the blinky sign. Yeah. Say, school in town. Blinky, blinky. Okay. Okay. What else do we got? Anything? Do you need topics for the next What is that? Police Shh. information for COA board. Is that what you were talking about, the director? That's your opinion. Any public comment? Did I steal this pen from somebody? Somebody Peggy. left this down. Oh, well, there. Peggy, it's yours now. You gave me that? You gave me that? Yeah. There you go. Okay, any other items not covered on this or that you would like to bring up? But, were any... there any topics recommended for the next issue? Do you need that? No. No. Okay. No. All right. In, the, in the one and a half minutes we have left, any <laughs> other? What's the last Tuesday of next month? Need to do it. I think I have it on my calendar. Oh, do you? Okay. <clears throat> be the twenty-fourth. Yep. Okay. Who's be the twenty-fourth? Okay. And would you like me to post that as a hybrid meeting? Please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hybrid in person and Zoom. You can also do it just in person if you would like. You don't have to do Zoom. Yeah, but if somebody has, for instance, been towed to destruction by the dog as they were walking and can't make it. <laughs> was it, was it that person's hand own hand dog? dog? What? Was it your own dog? It was. Oh. Okay, fair enough. I mean, yeah, I mean, that we've works. been doing it hybrid since, well, once we were able to do hybrid. Yeah. COVID. So, Except and with, more and more of us seem to be coming back. A to director, we can't effectively do it hybrid unless you're going to join all of these meetings. Well, I figured I would join you till you have a director. Well, there you go. Right. Did did the answer. Answer. So Sorry. the other question I had was, I you don't have like a table like this downstairs, do you? Around, no. We roll out round tables. Well, because I need to have a zoo. Yeah, I guess we we could either do it there or you could meet up here again next month. Whatever you this prefer. Is a lovely room. Some people on the. This is lovely. Sometimes Pat will call in. Call in. Sometimes. Is there a screen that she shows the the zoom on? It's just like this. Yep. Okay. However, well, that will be a subject of actually <laughs> improvement for the future. Um, the director and Clinton, we were saying, we only got one room for that. And the director and Clinton said, we started off in the same room. There's a lot you can do in the same room. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Bol Bol was it Bolton or Hudson? I don't know. Hudson, I guess, they have a downstairs room where they do yoga and stuff. And they have a big screen. So the people that are doing it on Zoom are actually part of the room. Well, oh, that I was just going to suggest. nicer. We have... 
And I don't know if anyone's available to do it during the day is the only issue because we do have the hybrid capabilities in the meeting rooms down at the end of the hall um, to be able to do it. But um, need somebody behind the we camera. need somebody behind the camera and usually they're only available at night. Yeah. So I guess my question to you then is for the September meeting, you're the chair. You want to do it downstairs? You want to do it here? It doesn't matter to me. If it's available, it seems like right it's close. Yeah. This is my office, so I, I will make it available. <laughs> well, this is, we, we moved things around. This is just like stupidly too big, but it didn't make sense to have Dee just sitting over here with a conference table, and she's trying to get work done, and we're having meetings in here, and it's like crazy distracting. So okay. this worked out a lot better. So I will post it for in here. Great. Room 206. Thank you. You're very welcome. We All right. Do oh. we... Do a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.